Now, it's been debated for many years, but is in sharp focus now. There are growing calls to scrap Sunday trading laws to help boost the economy as restrictions are relaxed. Well, some businesses think removing the restrictions on large shop opening hours would help the retail sector. Opponents are a heady mix of traditional Conservative MPs and church groups, left-wing politicians and unions, and small convenience stores likely to be hit by sales moving to large supermarkets. So let's debate the issue. Joining me now, Matthew Lesh. He's head of research at the Adam Smith Institute. And Paddy Lillis, who's General Secretary of the Union of Shop Distributive and Allied Workers. Welcome to you both. Matthew, let me start with you. What's the case for this? Look, ultimately abolishing Sunday trading laws is a non-brainer. Uh, these are inconsistent and arbitrary rules from a bygone era. We live in a 24-7 economy where you can buy things online at any time and people work all sorts of different shifts. Um, Sunday trading laws put the high streets at a huge disadvantage to online. Uh, they mean few opportunities to work for people who do want to work on weekends and do want that additional income. But they're also just bad for consumers because we have less opportunity to shop. Uh, during the Olympics, uh, we did let people trade on Sunday. And outside of London, sales increased by 6.5%. Uh, there was a previous study from about 2006 that found that there would be about $20 billion extra value to the economy if we abolish Sunday trading laws. As we need to get people social distancing, as we need to get the economy moving again, we need to abolish Sunday trading laws. All right, Paddy, why is he wrong? Well, he's wrong on a number of counts. Firstly, I don't think there's <clears throat> any appetite for 24-7 retail shopping in the UK. The country's facing the uh, biggest economic crisis in over 100 years, and the, the government's response and others is to deregulate shopping on Sunday. And we have demonstrated over and over again that there's no economic viability uh, to extend the Sunday trade. And, uh, and we've demonstrated over and over. And by the way, I mean, we've got the, the Great British Compromise uh, on Sunday trading. Shops are open. Uh, those below 280 square metres can open. It gives those smaller retailers an opportunity to make hay while the sun shines when they don't have the opportunity during the week. Uh, it gives retail workers an opportunity to spend time with their families. And especially, especially on a Sunday uh, when kids are off school, etc. So you know uh, there needs to be some respite for retail workers. These same retail workers are now seen as key workers and have, during this pandemic, have demonstrated and and shown uh, how important they are to the economy. They're out there facing uh, a dangerous virus uh, and 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 making sure the country's fed. And what we get is a slap in the face where they got to bring forward or look to bring forward deregulation of Sundays for an extra couple of hours open. There's no appetite for it. And the vast majority of the retailers are not in favour of it either. So it really is important that the government takes a step back from this and recognises there's more to just 24-7 shopping. Uh, there's also the opportunity for families to have some valuable time together as well. All right. Well, Matthew, that's a fair <laughs> point, isn't it? It does let the level of the playing field for smaller shops. The, the existing Sunday trading laws really do help small shops grab, grab a bit of market share that they'd otherwise lose to the giants. Well, I mean, the sure smaller shops are competing with larger shops every day of the week, and, and they do so quite successfully, and I, and I think they could in, in future. I mean, we have a real-life example of somewhere uh, pretty close to us that does allow trading freely on Sundays, and that's, of course, up in Scotland, where this is largely uncontroversial. I, I do find it quite bizarre, though, uh, the position from the union's position from Paddy here, that he doesn't want workers to be able to have the opportunity to get a job and go to work if they so choose, that he's taking that ability away from them. Now, in the, in the reverse here, there's, there are uh, rights to refuse to work on Sundays in Scotland, in, in England, in Wales, if people choose not to work on Sundays. But for a lot of people, let's say you're at university, you're studying during the week, you might want those few extra hours on Sunday to work. Um, I just think it's quite bizarre to be basically a union that's anti-work. All right, Paddy, what about that point about Scotland in particular? Well, I mean, we, we, we have opposed the, the extension in Scotland for many years. And again, there's no real uh, demonstration that it brings any big economic benefit to, to the Scottish economy. But going back on, on, on uh, colleagues... The marks are in terms of anti-jobs. People can work on Sundays, and you're quite right. There's a there's a law that allows you to opt out. But let, let me be clear: it's it's, it's an opt out which isn't really effective, because if you opt out, you're not guaranteed them hours anywhere else in the week. Uh, you actually lose the hours. And yes, people can work. And remember, uh, the 
the, all the sites with below 280 square meters can can operate and I do operate in the small in the small convenience sector. <clears throat> And that's really important. So we're not we, we're not on the employer. Like, listen, for, from our point is clear. We have been calling for a strategy for retail. Uh, Paddy, I'm very sorry. I've got to cut you off. We're out of time. Paddy Lillis, Matthew Lesh, thanks both.